Um, so what I'm going to be talking about today is using botulinum toxin for rosacea. And really what I'm focusing on is a subset of patients who are refractory um, to most treatments for rosacea. And those who have come to me really are patients with refractory flushing. So here's my thought. This kind of came to me and it also came to Steve Diane, who was one of the first people to publish on this idea in 2012. Can we use botulinum toxin for rosacea? What do we see when we inject people with neuromodulators? These are sort of clinical findings as well. We see that sebaceous gland hyperreactivity uh, is reduced, and this is thought to be via cholinergic and possibly by substance P-mediated uh, mechanisms. We also know that vasodilatory responses are reduced. And some of you have seen patients who go to the gym after they have had toxin in the forehead and they get that white circle on their forehead. That's because they're having less vasodilation. Okay, so we also know that uh, neuromodulators influence uh, various neuropeptides. The picture is not really clear. We don't know everything yet. But what we do know is that, they, uh, that it influences things like CGRP, vasoactive intestinal peptide, substance P, and it does this really by a cholinergic mechanism, okay? So this is beyond acetylcholine. This goes beyond the cholinergic mechanism that we know. So how do we do this? It sounds kind of weird, right? We're, we're, we're in, injecting toxin in these people's faces for rosacea. So let's, let's, I'm gonna give you a little guide. So dosing and techniques. First, you wanna map out the treatment area. Okay, so just know that the nose, the cheeks, the ears, and the chin can be treated. So yes, ears can be treated, believe it or not. And ears often are a very painful spot where people have a lot of flushing, okay, and pain. Um, what you wanna be doing is using your injection about a, uh, one centimeter apart, because we know that's kind of our general diffusion, right? And um, people have been using various dosing in various studies, but one to two Botox units in intradermal blebs seems to kind of be doing the trick. <coughs> You're normally gonna see onset in about seven to 14 days, and maximum um, effect is gonna start to kick in at about three to eight weeks after treatment. Um, duration is about four to six months. So what do we see when we inject them? The clinical findings are reduction in oil production, decreased inflammatory lesion count, reduced flushing, and pore size is minimized. What I will tell you is that patients of mine who are really desperate and are not willing to go back to flushing, they're coming back every two months because they just need their lives to be okay.